One of the first things you'll notice upon activating the Events Calendar or Events Calendar Pro 2.05 is the updated settings page. We've moved some things around, we've added some new features, and I wanted to put together a screencast so our existing users could see what has changed and so our new users knew what they were getting themselves into when they jump into this settings page. Now right now I'm running Events Calendar Pro. If I was running just the free The Events Calendar, you would be seeing fewer options on the screen here. As we go, I'm going to point out the Pro exclusive features, but please do keep that in mind over the next few minutes. One thing that will be the same for everybody, regardless of whether they're on free or pro, is upon activating and coming to settings, the events calendar, they'll be dumped into this general tab. And at the top of the tab, there's going to be this modern tribe box. You can click the link to check out our available add-ons, or you can donate a link to us, which we sure would appreciate. You'll see via the example that it's a small unobtrusive link down in the lower left-hand corner of your calendar view. It says calendar powered by the events calendar pro or the events calendar, depending on which version you're running. And it both gives us some exposure and generates some link love, both of which we would greatly appreciate. That being said, this is by no means required, and you'll see that when you come in here, it is unchecked by default. If you don't want the link, just leave it alone. If you want the link, hit the checkbox and save, and it'll appear automatically. Down below, we get down into more familiar territory. We have the default view for the events, list, or calendar. We have the events URL slug, which we can set for both the actual overall calendar and individual events. And then we have a new feature, the number of events to show per page in the loop. Now previously, you were dictated by your overall WordPress settings, which meant that if you wanted to have seven blog posts on your homepage blog loop, you totally could. But that also meant you were going to have seven events on all your events loops. Now we've segmented it out so that those are two totally separate things. To control how many events appear in all your events loops, just come right here. It's going to default to 10, but you can change it to whatever you want. That way you can still have seven blog posts on the homepage, but your events won't be limited by that. Down below we get to the comments. We can turn on comments for the plugin here. You can still control them on an event by event basis, of course. And then we have the multi-day event cutoff, another existing feature, but I might as well review it for those unfamiliar. Say you have a party that runs from 9.30 on Friday night to 1.30 on Saturday morning. Everybody knows that that's really a Friday night event, but calendar slash grid view is going to treat it as a two-day event unless you specify otherwise. That's where this comes in handy. You would just pick from the drop-down, let's say 1.30 a.m. Upon saving, the system is going to know that any event that ends at or earlier than 1.30 a.m. should not appear on GridView for its final day. That will save us for our Friday night party and will make it only appear on GridView for Friday. Next, we get into the Google Maps, which anybody familiar with the plugin will already be aware of. But what's new with 2.05 is the actual specific map settings don't appear until you enable them with the checkbox. We get into the embed height, which you're familiar with, and the embed width, which you're also familiar with. But a newer feature is this default zoom level for the map. Now by default, it's going to go to 10, which is about middle ground between 0, all the way zoomed out in space, and 21, way down in the street. But you can set it to whatever you wish. Anything between 0 and 21 that's a full number is fair game. Last option here is debug mode, which you can turn off your, or excuse me, turn on if you're into that sort of thing. I'm going to leave it off for the time being, and I'm just going to save my changes. You need to remember to save your changes because if you try to navigate to another tab without saving, they're going to be lost. I'm going to go over to the template tab next, which, as you'll see, is something that was already on the settings page. We just segmented it out into its own tab. You can pick from the default page or default events template. You can also use the showcase template or the sidebar template. If you want to add some HTML before or after your calendar, do that here too. Save if you make any changes. I didn't, so I'm not going to, but I am going to go over to the defaults tab. Now defaults is a pro exclusive feature. So if you are running just the events calendar, you're not going to see this. Turn it on by making sure this checkbox is checked and then set your default organizer and your default venue. The organizer can be either blank so that the person creating the events has to fill it in, or you can choose from your existing ones. Same goes for the venue, pick an existing one, leave it blank, or just set some bare bones like the state and the country, for example. That way, whoever's creating the events has to fill in the rest. Whenever you're done, make sure to save changes. And then let's hit the next tab, additional fields. Also a pro exclusive feature. Again, if you're familiar with the plugin from the past couple releases, you'll know this already. It allows you to add additional data to be included alongside the rest of your overall event data. Let's say you want to have a master of ceremonies or catering that appears alongside when the event starts, when it ends, the venue, etc. That's what you'll add right here. You can add as many as you want using this add another link. Just remember at the end to save changes. If you want a broader explanation as to how the additional fields work, click this link. We put together a little tutorial on it that should help you. Now the next tab is for licenses. 
If you're not running Pro, you're probably not going to have a license key to enter because the free The Events Calendar doesn't require one. Here, I do have Pro. I also have the Eventbrite ticketing add-on. I need to enter a key for each of them. It's important to note that every add-on that you get, made by Modern Tribe, if it requires a license key, you're going to need to enter that license key on this tab. This is the place where they'll all come together. Once you're done, save changes. And then the last thing is the Help tab. Everybody has this one. And it gives you a whole lot of information as to how to make the most of the plugin. Documentation, the FAQ, help, tutorials, release notes, as well as a whole bunch about our support team.